welcome to the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. In this little episode, what am I going to make for you? I'm going to make something out of pallet wood. I'm going to try and make a nice wine rack. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to strip down pallets. You look at our Totally Awesome Outdoor Show, one of the early ones, like how to make picket fencing. It's got massive, massive, hundreds of thousands of hits. It tells you how to take pallets to pieces. Get some nice pallet wood, either clean pallets or clean them down yourself. Now, what am I using? I'm going to be using side panels, I'm going to be using shelves you think to slide those bottles of wine on. Well, I'm going to make this taller than you would imagine. I'm going to make it out of this pallet wood here. I'm going to make it 38 inches long. Now, I pre cut this, I don't think you need to film how to saw wood up. I've made two of those. That's one side, if you can imagine. Obviously, the same the other side. And my spaces in between here are going to go like this. So you think, how on earth is he going to balance wood on there? But for those who want the measurement, the measurement of the crossbar supports, I will place the binoculars on my face. 13 and a half inches. If you can imagine that's the rack, I'm going to do a front and a back on that. Two sides. Think of it as shelves. But what on earth am I going to put them on? We've all seen those those boxes, you know, that are little crisscross like this, just to slide it. Ah, that's easy, that's old school. I'm talking really basic, I'm talking frontier stuff. I'm talking about making them out of guttering. Yes, sir. -y. A piece of guttering. I'm going to find a bottle down here. Oh dear. Just happens to be empty. It was nothing to do with me. Speak to my wife about this. A wine bottle, a piece of standard four inch white guttering. OMG. Does that not fit? Perfecto! That's what I'm going to make it in. I'm going to cut those up. These are all pre-cut ready. So you've got the measurements there. 38 inches for the sides. 13 and a half inches for the inserts. And an overlap top, which is my piece de resistance. It's a little bit longer. It's going to go over the top. And on that, I'm going to make something secret. I'm not telling you until later. What I am going to show you is a way, there's a lot of cuts in here, is an easier way, slight, very slightly easier way than hand sawing using a reciprocal saw, which is the one with a long blade, goes back and forth very fast, an electric power tool. You can get them with cordless ones, or you can get them corded. I have a cordless and a corded. I'm going to be using the corded plugged into the wire. So when you see the national grid dim and your lights go dim, you'll know that Graham's making something else out of pallet wood. Right, here's the tip for sawing wood. Okay, so we all know the difference and we're singing off the same hymn sheet. This is a regular hand saw, which is very good for straight cuts because it's very broad across here, providing your arm is nice and straight and in line. It's labour intensive in contrast to which we have the power tool, which is not so labour intensive. In fact, it's a labour saving device. But with these blades, okay, you can see, we can bend round corners with these. If you try and cut straight with these immediately it tends to chew and kick off the wood a little bit so what I do is this now here on this piece of scrap wood this is only a piece of scrap wood I marked up with my set square I could cut that straight away with this but I'll show you what happens generally trying to get the start of the cut you might just see that blade wobble now once I'm in here, I'm away. You can see I just mess up the edge there where the blade's trying to catch. So to get around that, what I do is I just put a groove in this with that hand saw just at the top. That's all it takes. It gets it started. And then, this time I'll put the, the earphones on. When I line the blade up, obviously not going through the chair, the bench, or any work, work top, it should go straight through much cleaner. Now another tip. It can be very tempting to go through vertically like that. But what will happen is this blade will wander all over the place and you'll end up with what we call in England a donkey's hind leg like that. A curve. So the way I do it is I start on the tip there but then I lower it down gently, just the weight of the blade on there, so the blade gives me a straight cut there, and that follows itself all the way down. I'm going to put the earphones on, the defenders, and show you what I mean.
there you can see I've already got a nice straight line and I can follow that all the way through keeping the blade not vertical but slightly lower and drawing it towards me don't force it that as you can see is a quick way of doing it it's a little tip but I've got another one for you I'm going to be making my channels for resting the bottle in as I showed you from an old piece of guttering, two old pieces of guttering that I found. I've washed and cleaned it all up, so it's nice and clean and ready to saw. I'm going to saw it that way up, but it's very slippy with the saw. Also, no chance with the reciprocal, it's going to be all over the place. Not so good with a hand saw. You want a tenon saw, and I'm going to use a tenon saw on it, but I'm also going to put a little I don't know, like a little template to hold it. I'll show you what I mean. A little block of wood either side so it doesn't slip. It's plastic so it's slippery. Easy when I show you. Right, I've got some scrap pieces of pallet wood. I've nailed them in but not buried the nail so I can always get them out again if I want. And I've made this little, like a mini vice really, isn't it? And you just pop your plastic drain pipe in there like that. Got a support at the back. And that stops it, if I didn't do this, it would be wobbling all around like this when I'm sawing, because it's skinny plastic. So this at least gives you something to grasp. And here we have your tenon saw, which is a fine bladed one and should cut through the plastic easier and keep it nice and straight. There's my grip, nice and slow. There we go. Now, what I do is I tend to go around that curve first and then back around this way. Just the way I do it, rather than get the blade caught here and here, because as you get those last two support bits, they can be a bit tricky. Again, don't force the saw, otherwise you will crack the plastic. That's one half done. And of course that's the size I want. You merely slide it forward on your, your little support there. Line it up the same as the other one. And then you've got your, your mark just there. Little cut. You're ready to duplicate it. Slide it to the end and saw again. It makes life easy. Now when you've got the drain pipes done you're going to find little rough edges around there. Get yourself a narrow piece of wood. A circular piece of wood would be better, but this will do the same thing. Wrap it in the sandpaper like this and just rub off those round edges. Take the edge off the plastic and you'll find it's nice and smooth, you won't snag any bits of clothing or anything like that. It's easy to do, worth doing, trust me, makes life a lot easier to get spiked or anything. Do that with all these bits of plastic and for your bits of wood I would do the same. If you've got some wood, like this, you can either, any saw cut rough edges, take off a chamfer, very slight chamfer, with either a rasp like this, or coarse grade sandpaper, a wider block of wood, and just rub away, generally clean it all up. Now what I'm gonna do, I've got everything fitted together, sides, bases, tops, and guttering, yes, guttering bottle supports. I think I'm gonna start building the mainframe. Right, I've got my two sides which are held together by these supports here with screws that don't come through the other side. I could glue it, no need to, I feel the screws will hold it. Then I'm putting the base on here, but I'm pre-drilling the holes here because being near the edge of the wood, it helps them stop to split. You only go through the top piece. It basically just stops the, uh, the wood splitting when you're near the end of edge of any uh, piece of wood more than about half an inch except hardwood you can go through that seems to be okay and then just send the screws in line it all up that's one set your torque control however you want for softwood that's that done that's the base I'll turn it back up the other way and fit the top but only provisionally I'm starting to screw the top in with my screws here but I've only put two here because I'm going to try and cut in there. Now I don't know whether you can see there, I've made a pencil mark. And this is the secret I'm going to make here. I'm going to come in there to midway, I'm going to make a hole. Just like this, with a, a bit of a wider drill bit. 
slow speed because I've only got a couple of screws supporting it. And then I'm going to draw a pencil line either side of that, just here. Not very wide, not much wider than that hole. About there, either side. And just cut that channel out there. Cut the channel out, but you're going to find it fiddly to sandpaper. So I get a screwdriver, cut a piece of coarse sandpaper, roll it right around like that, and you can get right in that circle and sand all those loose pieces off. Now you can see the slot I've cut there, and you wonder what it's for, and it's for, oh yes, a nice place to hang some glasses right next to the wine. Gonna get two or three in here I should think uh, and I can make it wider if I wanted to but this is just a basic one you know if you're in a small one or two bedroom apartment one or two people you're gonna barely drink out of more than one glass so you can get several in there. We'll work our way along here and then we start putting the shelf in. Right now I'm gonna start making the actual bottle rack. So I've got my two pre-cut shelves there and I'm going to put one, two, three of the bottle racks made from the guttering, just equidistant front and back, it doesn't matter really. I can move them up and down those pieces of timber. I could bring it flush there at the front. It might look a little bit better flush at the front. And I'm gonna screw those with very small screws because they've only got to be held in position dead central, but I'm gonna to have to drill first. The main thing is drilling first because otherwise you're going to try and go through there and the plastic will, will crack. So I'll go right in the middle just pop it through there the same at the back make sure it's all square and then just a small screw that you can use pretty well any small screw just to locate these and nothing too big again otherwise it is going to crack it. Let's try this one. Just locate the screw in the hole. Come back on the torque on the cordless. That's it, that one's got, that, that's nice and firm, just making sure it's all nice and square. Gonna drop one in the back here. Well, I'm actually gonna make enough for 12 bottles of wine, which I feel is enough. Okay, so I'm going to just, that is what you call a tight fit. I barely need to screw that. But what you've got to do, doing it this way, you've got to allow, before you screw anything, like this I'll show you, like the height of the glass, the bottle's probably going to touch it. So I want it a little bit lower, just move it down gradually. Mind how you tap the plastic. And you also want it tipped back slightly at an angle, just like this. So the bottles are, are resting back and don't tip outwards. Obviously I'm going to put a back plate on there as well. Right, I'm just putting the screws in here on the last couple of shelves. And there I've got one, two, three, four, three, three fours if we all go to school, three fours are twelve. So it's all ready to go. I just need to put a strut across the back here which stops the bottles sliding out. I'm going to pin one there, two, three, four, and I've got something left. I've got to do something when I get that jigsaw in my hand. I get all arty. Okay, that's every one of the uh, backs there supports that stops the bottle sliding out in obviously it reassures the sides of this it's very very strong now but I've got one more final piece I want to do to make it look possibly the best homemade wine rack on YouTube so there we go I put 
A little bit of Philip, I told you it was dangerous if I got hold of that jigsaw with my artistic talent. A little bit of shape at the bottom, storage area there. Oh, it's heavy, I tell you, it's solid wood. But at the top, lovely, beautiful bit of shape in there, made with the curves, wait for this, from a paint pot. And that shape there, I just felt it needed something at the back. I could bring it down here, but I didn't want to interfere with those glasses that hang there. And I used that, believe it or not, using the round curved edge of the paint pot across the top, marking either side, reversing the paint pot. No, not upside down, the paint will fall out. Reversing the angle from the base so it curves away there, ran it around with the jigsaw, sand it. All I'm going to do is sand the rest of this. Do I paint it? Do I shabby sheet it? Do I varnish it? Do I stain it? It is all solid wood, all pallet wood, scrap pallet wood, and scrap guttering, like drain pipe guttering. I've just got to think about it a bit. Maybe I should have a glass of wine before I decide what I'm going to do with it colour wise. Well, I've finished staining it in the garage. It's in the house now. Who on earth would have thought you could turn this into one of these? And this is what I've managed to turn this into just in the confines of my garage without huge lathes, huge expensive thousands of dollars worth of machinery. Just the regular sort of power drills, cordless stuff, DIY that most of you guys and, well, and girls, there's a lot of girls out there as well do DIY, that could possibly make something like this. And listen, you don't have to follow this pattern. You can make it wider, put a bank of glasses, but I like this tall and narrow. If you've got a small apartment, small two bedroom house, something like that, this might be ideal for your kitchen, even your lounge area, make your own bar area. Really pleased with the way this color, the stain has taken up. And do you know what that is? It's decking stain left over, but it's come up a really nice color. And of course, by keeping this wide here, not only do I get to put the wine rods in there, it's wide enough, should you so have the finance, to put champagne in as well, and all your other drinks. And right down the bottom here, you've got a gap there, you can store stuff as well. You put napkins, serviettes, whatever you want down there. Glasses come out, as you can see. I'm definitely saying that's the best one made on YouTube out of pallet wood. And more important, you know the saying here on the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. It's free but not with the drinks and glasses. That's my wife's department.